can you hear me? Those using the mics, uh, the headphones, okay. Is it clear enough? You want to try? Those people, um, if you are using the headphones, ting down ma. Can you hear what I'm saying? Okay, good. All right. Okay. Um, thank God for bringing us together. I'm so happy and praise the Lord that I could spend the end of this year with the most hopeful and potential people in our ministry. Amen. That is the remnants, especially in Penang. Amen. So all of you know I'm back from the States and I'm here to bring you good news about how the Lord has brought our remnant ministry forward. All right. And by your prayers, you know, I've shared the word. There was a lot of trials. <laughs> and, uh, I was uh, struck by illness and all. But the Lord brought me back safely. And I, I want to tell you that because of the work of the Holy Spirit, um, the remnant ministry has taken root in the States. And I'm pleased to announce to you that next year, uh, we're going to have our first Remnant Conference in the States. We call it the Winter Remnant Conference, okay? <laughs> winter, end of the year. So middle of the year, we have it in Penang, okay? Or KL, I don't know, okay? And the end of the year, we'll have it, right, in the States. And you remember Mary and Ellen? And then they are people who, who still have the gospel in their hearts. And I really praise the Lord for that. They went through a lot of trials in their lives and but they were greatly encouraged to some. And I realized that what has been imprinted in their lives stays, really stays. And so I, I like you, all of us, to, to really see that the Lord is materializing the vision that He has given us for world evangelism. And when time's up, I'm going to bring some of you there <laughs> to see the few and testify for the Lord. Amen to that? All right. So, um, so, I want to encourage you, okay, if you are finding life here in Penang very trying at times, <laughs> struggling, <laughs> don't know why you are going through some sufferings, you know. Now, believe that the Lord is doing great work behind. More than what we, are, we notice, okay, sometimes great works happen in our lives more than what we could be conscious of, okay. Because what the Lord has prepared for those who loved Him is beyond what we could see, beyond what we could think of, all right? That's what the Bible says. And so don't look down on yourself. What I'm going to tell you that is, listen, Remnant, this era needs first the gospel, all right? First, you need the gospel, the right gospel. And second, you need the model of gospel culture. You know what is the model of gospel culture? Meaning people who believe the gospel and they live it out. Now, I'm not afraid to tell you that in the States or in Singapore or anywhere else in this world, Christians are becoming so comfortable. And you notice that they are pursuing superficial Christianity. Very superficial. Now, you know it from the way they, you know, they can know everything about the Bible. They know Acts chapter 2. You know, they know it. But it's not real in their hearts. It's not real in their living. It's not what they pursue in their lives. Do you know what it means? Superficial Christianity. Now, what do you mean by coming together every day, breaking bread, sharing Christ, enjoying the favor of God and man? No, coming together, enjoying the fellowship. Now, you listen, people know this in the big book, the Bible. But if it's not pursued, if it's not in the concern of their hearts, if it's not lived out, it means nothing. It cannot influence the souls of men. It cannot turn the world around. You understand what I'm trying to say? And what makes the, a ministry in Penang so precious and awesome is because we have people who lived out the model of gospel culture. Now, when you say culture, it's not just believing, you know. People just, oh, I believe God, I believe Christ, I praise God, hallelujah. Now, you, when you sing, you get emotional. But now, it's about putting all your concern in line with it. It's really practicing it in your living. 
It's really connecting your life and your living together in sync with the gospel. You see, that is what I'm talking about. But if you go, if you go to the States, you know, people are so comfortable. They go to church on Sunday. I want to know if they come for self-group. And why they have to rush back. They have to sleep at 9 a.m., uh, 9 p.m., <laughs> sorry. <laughs> the most 10 p.m., I'm tired, Pastor. I cannot go beyond that. I have work to do, you know, a career to pursue, you know. I have mortgage to pay, you know, that kind of thing. You, you get what I mean? Now, that, the, the primary concern is not there. The primary living, you, you could see, you can sense when you talk to them after meetings. You talk to people, you know where the concern is. I'm ta not talking about those. Those things will not change the world. You can, you can do that kind of Christian living for 100 years. Nothing will change. The era will just pass by without godly people rising up to influence the, the world, the era. Nothing. So we are here in Penang. We're really doing a ministry, a genuine Christ ministry, talking about here. And we are not just doing a ministry. We are starting a gospel culture towards the end of this era. Amen? And believe me, Pastor Vincent grew up in a Presbyterian church. I grew up in a Presbyterian church. I know church structure. I know church politics. I can differentiate right and wrong teachings. I get exposure from a lot of teachings. You know, we hold positions in the church, in the fellowship. We did that for 10 years. 10 years in the Presbyterian church, in traditional church. But you cannot see real connection between what is being preached on the stage. People can be doctrinally right, but you don't see it in their living. No real connection. And that's what I'm concerned about. I'm really concerned about when we are doing a remnant ministry. And, and over there, in, in this kind of settings, you know, in this kind of settings, the, the most spiritual people you, you will see is, okay, those people who, who study seminary. Who go full time for the Lord? I know these are the people we looked up to in the past, in the traditional church, you know, wherever, what kind of denomination you are in. We always look up to people. Oh, these these people are the spiritual ones because they go to seminary. All right, they offer their lives to do full time. But I'm not looking out for those things. I'm looking out for disciples, 24/7, doing everything in line with the gospel. Now, you, you could be doing a worldly job, but your primary concern is the kingdom. I'm talking about this. And the Lord is looking out for this kind of model in this era. Unless you live like that, you're not going to impact the world. Because in the church, say 100 people, you only have one or two full-timers. You know? And people always look at full-timers, oh, because that's your career. So you are doing this all the time as your primary concern. I'm ta not talking about this. I'm looking for remnants, disciples of Christ, who really take Acts chapter 2 genuinely. And the Lord works through such a model, such a culture. So, remnants in Penang, in Singapore, you are the envious of the American church. Really, I'm talking about that, okay? So, I'm telling you how real the promise of God is. If God is with us, no matter how small we are, what will the Lord do through us? If the Lord is with Israel, He, he make them the light to all nations. And that's what the Lord has promised us, alright? Okay? So pray, alright? <laughs> you have to go through the trying period in Penang, in Singapore. And then you proceed to China. And you have to go through China. <laughs> and then you proceed to the States. <laughs> Amen to that, okay? So I pray for you. Okay, look to the Lord, look to the vision that He has given us, all right? The Lord is doing much more than what we could imagine. And, and those adults here, elderly, you know, you really pray for us. Pray for your children. And pray for your spiritual children, all right? Amen? And, and as you follow this gospel culture, we are, and follow this movement, you see how the Lord will use you and your family. Now, this time, Pastor Vincent is here. I'm bringing you a message on spiritual healing. All right? I'm going to talk a lot about healing, especially with regards to spiritual healing. Now, listen up. All healing comes from 
having the right spirit in Christ. Now, remnants, I know you have been listening to a lot of messages, gospel messages, but you have to test whether there is a real change in your spirit fundamentally. That is a spirit that is in submission to Christ. Is there a real change in your spirit fundamentally? You hear a lot of message. You know there's a lot of areas you need breakthrough. And you try to change interpersonally. Uh, no, breakthroughs financially. Breakthrough emotionally. Now you try to pursue these things a lot. You hear the healing messages, the 10 healing messages. Now you try to pursue, but somehow it is hard for you. It is hard to submit to God. Why? Listen, why? Because you didn't experience change in your intrinsic nature. We call it in Chinese the 本质, 本质性的改变. You get what I'm trying to say? The intrinsic nature is your spirit. Now, you listen to the message. Now, you pray. But when you look within you, it's still the old you. The same old thinking. The same old mindset. When you look at yourself, you don't read yourself as what the Bible says you are. Don't you realize? Now, you realize that that is what I meant by you're not changing intrinsically. Now, you hear the messages. Now, you have it in your head. But a lot of times when you see yourself, you are not the glorified, dignified you. That Abraham, Sarah, Joseph, Daniel, now of this era, now I don't see anything about myself that is like that. The way you interpret problem, the way you see issues, the way you look at your brethren, we are just not like people sitting on the king's table. You realize that? You realize that's what I meant by you're not changing your intrinsic nature. You're just taking in some knowledge, some enlightenment, some insights, and after that, you look at yourself the same way as what you usually do. Now, that is no real change in your spirit. And that's why when, you, when there's no change in your spirit, you try to pursue godly living. You realize it's hard. You try to love your brethren, your siblings. It's hard. It doesn't come. There's no transformation there, right in you. Now you try to teach your children, pray, and you tell them Bible story and what you should do and not do. But you realize they don't change because you don't change. They don't see the transformation in you. So when you speak, there's no transformation of power. You get what I'm trying to say now? Okay, I'm giving you a very spiritual message. Now, that's why what I'm saying now is when the gospel comes upon a person, it doesn't just come as an enlightenment. It comes with transformation of power. That's why Paul said when the gospel came upon him, he realized it is not him who is living anymore. It's not him anymore. Nothing of himself but Christ lived in him as he lived. He lived by believing in the Son of God. That by believing in Him, seeing everything through His lens, through the promise of God, change in the intrinsic nature, change in His perspective, change in His mindset, everything changed. And from there, healing comes. Through healing comes in every sense. You get what I'm trying to say? But if you, if you realize, but be careful people, you, you, if you're not careful, you're still the same you. You remain the same you. Old nature, old thinking, old way of living, the old way of written code. Why is that so? Now, people ask, why, why is that so? Why is it so many times, you know, we can hear the gospel, but later on, we still give in to our big self, that self-nature. We still give in to believe what we see, believe what we feel. We still give in to self-pity and all, self-gratification. Why? Listen, what I'm trying to say, why? Because, because there are demonic attacks. There are demonic influences 
that come against us every moment in our lives demonic powers coming against us there are real spiritual battles in our lives every day and mind you listen up the most deadly demonic attacks not talking about demonic attack now today the most deadly ones are not those you could sense or see usually when we talk about demonic influence demonic powers demonic attacks we tend to think demonic manifestation right am i right we always think like that we want to see something about the devil we want to see something evidential now i'm telling you now the real powers of the dark world the authorities the rulers of the air those of the heavenly authority the fallen angels their work are not those that you could be even conscious of that's why paul said that's why paul said our battle is not against flesh and blood you get i'm trying to say it's not flesh and blood what do you mean flesh and blood flesh and blood are those things that you could see you could sense you could feel now you can feel when a person getting angry ah you can't see a person getting angry demonic attack no you must know before he got angry there are demonic spirits of disbelief working on him giving him a carnal mind you get what i mean making him think and feel in contrary to the gospel listen up in contrary to the gospel you notice that and when a person has been subjected to demonic influences and attacks constantly consistently and not even noticing it one day he realized he fall into great sin and one day he asked himself the question why am i not changing after 5 years or 10 years in christianity because he didn't notice the demonic attack the influences that's coming against him all the time now listen up these are forces very dark forces that turn the minds of men that turn the culture of the world and even the workings inside the church to be in contrary to the gospel and you ask me pastor vincent you just said there are those that you cannot see so how are you going to go against them how are you going to go against them can you answer me when you cannot even see satan when you are not even conscious of his presence and his how are you going to go against him how where to start jordan tell me where to start church, <laughs> church? no <laughs> Christine, any how you going to go against Satan when you're not even conscious of him? Don't know. <laughs> are you with me? People, are you with me? I'm speaking very slowly so that you can catch me, okay? Now I'm telling you. When when Paul mentioned in Ephesians chapter 6, your battle is not against flesh and blood. you are against the authorities the powers of the dark world you see the rulers of the air in the heavenly heavenly realms and paul said that after he said that he said put on the full armor of god put on the full armor what does it mean the full armor the full armor is a representation of the complete truth of god without the truth of god you you, you don't even know that you have been subject subjected to demonic influences you get know I me mean? i'm telling you now the most deadly demonic attack are those that come against you every moment and it shapes your nature it makes you a disbelief person it gives you a carnal mind that you can never submit to god demonic attack it turns your mind away from the gospel it turns your perspective it turns your heart away from the gospel unknowingly and only when you know the complete truth of god the full armor the full armor starts from the belt of truth and it ends with the sword of the spirit that is the word of god it's a complete truth full set unless you know the truth of god 
And after you know the truth of God and you learn to pray in the Spirit, when you pray in the Spirit, things in the spiritual realm become known to you. It becomes obvious to you. And the way Satan works becomes obvious to you. Oh, now you know. It's turning me away from God. It give, it's giving me a little warm heart. It's working upon me, giving me a, a, a disbelief spirit. And that's why it's, it makes me, you know, that's why it makes the church grow little warm. It makes the church grow mundane and very quickly. And before we realize it, our marriages are affected. Humanistic ways take root in us. Interpersonally, we are affected. You know, you see, everything just take root unknowingly. So I say it again. You know what is demonic? These are unseen. You're not even conscious of. And only after you know the truth of the gospel, number one, and second, you learn how to pray in the spirit. On all occasions, as you pray in the spirit, I'm not praying in tongues, okay? Praying in spirit is praying by the truth so that the truth becomes realistic in you. It becomes realistic in your heart. So when the demon work and it tells you things, it insinuates you, you know, they accuse you, they make you think otherwise, it makes you hate your spouse, it makes you judge your brethren, you know, it makes you lose your love, you know, and it makes you live warm, you can sense it. It's coming, it's coming. And I'm getting on my knees now, pray against him. Alright? Unless you become so spiritually discerning through the truth and through praying in the spirit. You will never know what is the demon, what is the devil's work. And most Christians, I tell you, they don't know how the devil works. And if you don't know the enemy, you cannot even go against him. Alright? And so you try to love, you try to be good, you try to exercise your self-control. You couldn't. Why? Because you don't know the demonic work that takes root in you all this while, all the time. Even when you are learning what 36th lesson, what gospel, every week, then you don't know why you just feel otherwise. Right after meetings, you know, you just think otherwise. You just sink and sometimes into your self pity. You sink into your, you know, you lose control over your temperaments. You don't know why, you know, you start judging people and you're not. You're letting loose, you, know, you don't know why demonic influences I'm talking about right now, okay? And it conceals itself in godless culture. It conceals itself in truncated gospel teachings. And it slowly uses the ways of the world to occupy the hearts of men. And unless you know the truth clearly, and pray till you develop those spiritual nature, you never go against it. You find yourself unproductive. You run into the same problems again and again. You work very hard, but you don't know why this doors of evangelism doesn't open up for you. You know, there are some obstructions right there against your heart, against the doors of evangelism, against your ministry, now, against how you should feel right about God. Obstruction, right? Herders there. So I'm going to, I'm going to talk to you quite a bit about this. It's a very spiritual message, okay? So I'm speaking very slowly. I hope the elderly got it in the Chinese translation, okay? Now, can we just turn to the scripture? Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. Now, if you turn with me to Matthew chapter 4. Anyone hungry? <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> Today, some, someone was telling me uh, some of us could be hungry for dinner, okay? Let me tell you, my food is to do the will of him who sent me. Finish his work, okay? I'm not hungry. I'm doing his work by preaching now. You're doing his work by listening now. Give me a full attention, all right? Matthew chapter 4. And look at this. This is the temptation of Jesus. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. Now, led by the Spirit. Answer me, if you are led by the Spirit, will you end up with temptation? Will or will not? <laughs> Why are you not answering me? <laughs> will or will not, Alex? When you are led by the Spirit, will you be led into temptation? Yes, that's what the scripture says. Okay? 
Jesus was led by the Spirit and now ended up with temptation but when there are temptation is the Spirit still there? Yes. So you must learn to rely on the Spirit into temptation and out of temptation. Okay, that is the thing. Now, after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, you know, by nature, right, this body, bodily nature, he was hungry, the tempter came to him and said, the tempter always come like that. He seems to speak to our will, speak to our needs. If you are the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Tell these stones to become bread. Now listen, this is where Satan is very subtle. Why do I say that? He always sounds right. He always sounds very relevant. Right? But he is taking the main piece of God's word away. Now listen, listen. If you are the son of God, now he says that, if you are the children of God, now what would the children of God, what would the son of God do? Answer me, fundamentally. What would the son of God fundamentally do? Number one, the fundamental, listens to God. Understand? listens to the father he puts the father instruction above everything because his source of joy strength and satisfaction comes from listening to the father all right and so he listens to, to the father and eat and play and work then he will enjoy now satan is very subtle and cunning why he always speaks right to the needs very relevant you are hungry you need to be loved you need to be accepted you know you need to be well liked you know you need you need a good job you need a good health so if you are children of god ask for this no it's taking away the main piece us listen to the father seek his will what to do now what is his will for me what is his reason why he subject me to suffering listen to him first then know what to do from how he instructs you but satan always take away the fundamentals if you are the children of god the son of god and go right to the needs get your needs satisfied never bother about what the father says no that is what satan is okay you understand i, I want you to to know this first because <clears throat> because this is the way demonic demonic influences come against us all the time now you put doubts in us through what through very legitimate needs in our lives okay and then what did jesus said jesus answered it is written man does not lift on bread alone but on every word that comes from the mouth of god you see that you see that we don't live on bread alone tonight okay <laughs> if you're hungry okay from the mouth of God, okay? Right now, if you understand the word of God, you won't be hungry, okay? If you don't understand, you'll be tired and hungry. Really, I tell you. Verse 5. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, again, if you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone you see it's the same thing okay if you are the son of god coming to save the world come just throw yourself down let the angels hold you perform this magnificent act and let the world know you are the awesome son of god now listen hold it the son of god is not here to prove himself to be superior by some supernatural or awesome act am i right he comes to listen to the Father. He is here to save the world, yes, but through obeying the Father. Through obeying the Father in all things, He brings back what has been lost in the hearts of men. What is it? That is the heart of submission. That is the yielding of our sovereignty to God. Because when man is fallen, they've fallen. How are they fallen? How are they fallen? 
they want to have sovereignty over their own lives. And they lose the heart of submission. So the Son of God came and showed, came and showed the heart of submission. So He has to bring back what has been lost. He has to come into the hearts of believers to be their king in their hearts, you see? By listening to the Father, by even going to the cross, you see? That is the thing. They don't, now the devil doesn't understand this. The prosperity gospel doesn't understand this. They don't understand. But people who have the true gospel, they know. It's worth more than a million to listen to the Father. Okay? And here goes again. And what did Jesus answer? It is also written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I will give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. And Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan. Away from me. For it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Now, do you notice the similarity between these three temptations? You notice the way Jesus answered Satan? The subject is always God. Word from the mouth of God. Okay? Do not put the Lord your God to test. Only worship the Lord your God. The subject is the Father God. So the Son shows how He exhausts the Father by listening to the Father in all things. And this is what the devil hates most. And listen, you don't drive the devil away by shouting at him or through positive thinking. He doesn't go away. Away, Satan, away. No, it's not. It's not just shouting at him. You drive the demons away. You drive. Now, there are fears, anxiety, loneliness, accusations, hatred in our lives. Now, you, no use feeling helpless and feeling lousy about it. But you must know when you listen and obey the Father, in submission to Him, the devil goes. That is a spiritual principle. Now, you understand that? Okay? As you obey, Satan goes. And verse 11, Then the devil left him, and angels came and attended him. Notice that? The angels strengthened and lifted us when we obeyed the Father. Now we have to believe we can be weak in the flesh, but when the angels came and attended to us, we will be awesomely strengthened and lifted. You guys know I was, I was really terribly sick in China. <laughs> it was really, you know. And, uh, my wife said, never seen my husband so sick before in, in her life. I thought I almost lost my life. No. I, I was, I was, recently I was reading, you know, those stories about uh, Christian heroes, you know. You know, when I was really in my pain, uh, terribly vomiting, diarrhea, wherever I drink, you know, I'll just vomit ten times more, you know. Really, you know. I vomit from, they prepare a sweet for me. You know how I messed up the suite? I vomit from the living room all right to the toilet. <laughs> you know, you know. I thought I almost died. I was like having flashback about these Christian heroes and thought how they die in some, some strange places with strange illnesses like malaria. <laughs> and, and, so, and people pray for me. I know, I mean, co workers, travel mates really pray for me. No. I tell you what, I remember that night when the Lord healed me. I'm like, I was. My pain, the pain, my gastric, my stomach was at peak and I was vomiting everything out. Now, I feel totally weak in my flesh. But my mind is clear. Have you ever experienced that? Your mind is clear. Your mind knows you're suffering for Christ. Your mind knows that God is in charge. Your mind is in submission. But you're totally weak in pain, groaning and all. Now, that is the thing. And that night, and that night, the Lord heals me. And I got up, I thought I would dehydrate, I just drink every 15 seconds, I'm breathing very hard, every moment, every second, then wake up every 15 seconds, drink that, that isotonic drink that, that Randy brought for me. <laughs> and I just drink every 15 seconds, and I survive through the night. And the next day, they brought me to the drip. And they thought the drip cured me, because I was, they're dripping you know, for four hours and ministering to the people. You know. But I tell you what, I told them, the Lord has healed me the night before. 
Because if not for that, I will dehydrate, I will die. No, but the thing is, you brought me to the drip now. <laughs> you thought it's the drip who, that healed me. It's not that. God, put me behind. Put me behind for your sake, to strengthen you. And that's how, you know, what happened is, because our co-workers, our travel mates at Ningpo, you know, in, in the province of Zhejiang, they lack, they have been hearing the gospel for three years, but I know they lack the resolution to plant the church. They're worried about everything. They're worried about how they will be persecuted, you know, all kinds of concern. They, don't, they were so passionate before I came down, but they lose the passion, they lose the resolution. And the minds filled with disbelief, I don't know why. And then God struck me with the illness, I stayed behind, they saw how I carry on serving the Lord. And put it in short, our Zhejiang church is going to be the Sunday, so the first Sunday service is going to start next week, okay? Okay, they, they just told me last week <laughs> it's going to start next week. So apparently the Holy Spirit worked on, upon their hearts. And what happened is, you know, the ministry in states, you know, the churches there was greatly encouraged, you know. I was on the drip. The next morning, 6 a.m., I woke up and then to the airport and 20 hours flight to the states and I finished the work of the Lord. And I know that is the strength of the angels. When you submit to the Lord, when you submit to the Lord, the Lord worked much more. The angels attended to me and He accomplished much more through me, through what I could, you see? Now you must experience that, the power of submission. It's not a one-off miracle. And when we fight spiritual battles like that, we know. We know how is it like, you see? So I'm bringing you to the message today now follow me all right i'm going to talk about first the fallen ninjas what do you know about him now listen up you don't just study about the fallen angels doctrinally most people just study them, oh, oh, he's the old serpent. Oh, he's the red dragon. He's the one who steal, kill, and destroy. Oh, he's the father of lies. Now, you can go on the list, but it could mean nothing to you. Listen, it means nothing to you if you don't confirm. If you don't confirm his presence, and if you don't confirm his works, and know him, right in your hearts and mind all right you can just study him literally doctrinally now not enough you must know and confirm his presence and works and listen up accurately okay accurately don't drive the wrong demons okay, in our lives. Only when you know His presence and works accurately. You know where He is. You know what He's afraid of. And you know how to drive Him away. That's the thing. Alright? And knowing Him. So, let's go to what the Bible says about the fallen angels. The Bible says they are angels always working against the truth of God. And that's why we call them lies. The father of lies. Now, these are not just common lies, but lies that goes against everything God says. You understand? These are lies that tells people partial truths. And then he makes you think and feel the wrong way about God, not about yourself, about people around you, about everything in this creation. He makes you think and feel wrongly about your health, your finances and all. Lies. And that's the way he deceives Adam and Eve, you know. God knows when you eat the fruit, when you eat of the fruit, you will be like God that you will know good and evil, like him, wise like him. Now, when the devil says that, listen up, it implies three things. 
Number one, he's saying that Adam and Eve, you are not a perfect creation. Alright? And then number two, you know God has, so that means you're still lacking. Am I right? You're still lacking. Number two, he's implying that God has withhold the best from you. God has withhold the best from you. So number three, so make a choice, good choice for yourself. Choose for yourself what is good, meaning you have your own sovereignty over your own lives. Choose what you like. Choose what you like. So not just the, when you, the fruit represents the sovereignty. Am I right? When you eat the fruit, when Adam and Eve eat the fruit, it implies to God that now God, I know what I need. I know what I want. I know my judgment. Okay, I make my own choice about things, about everything, about relationship, about everything. My own choice. You see, that is a lie. You see, it's not just a common lie. It's not just telling you, hey, I have $100 in my pocket and I say, I have no money. You know, it's not just that kind of lie. It's the lie that goes against the truth of God. Okay? Anything about God, about yourself, about people, about everything in this creation, Satan makes you understand it wrongly through his lies. Okay? He saw the lies. He draws you away from the source of truth. He draws you away from His grace. And you know what? And His lies is powerful and delusive. Are you with me? Hmm. Are you with me? Powerful and delusive. First, why is it powerful? Now you have to know some things fundamentally first, okay? Spiritual truths and messages you have to know why is the lies of the fallen angels powerful because they are angels by nature the angels have authority and divine power you see for good angels when they bring good news from god it strengthens man infinitely am i right but for fallen angels when they come with their lies they turn our hearts into fear and make us shrink. Am I right? So, very powerful. They have divine power. It can make a person feel and think otherwise from the truth. Imagine, even perfect creatures like Adam and Eve, they cannot go against the angels. They are powerless against the angels. They cannot overcome the devil by their wisdom, by their willpower. Now, you got to know not just know this in your head, okay? You must confirm the devil's work. You must read a lot into how he deceives you intellectually and emotionally through what? Through confirmation. Now, you learn about this. You know about it. You learn about this from the Bible. But you must confirm, oh, come on, he's deceiving me. How is it like? You know, I can be filled with the Spirit today. And I wake up the next day, I feel everything is different. Everything is so gloomy. My future is so bleak, so dark, everything. Now, that is the forces of darkness. And then you see no hope about anything at all. About everything. Now, confirm. Never mind if, if you look... I mean, never mind if you, you are subject to these attacks. But when you are being attacked, you must confirm this truth. You must know what is he like in your hearts and mind. Through your soul, you know your enemy. You know your enemy. And why is he, listen, why is he delusive? Listen, huh? why is he delusive? Because his lies has a sense of reality. It's like when you are poor, you know, you, you tend to believe you will go on being poor. Like the sense of reality. Right? When, when you are wounded, wounded, hurt, you tend to be very sensitive, defensive over what others say about you, even though people don't mean that, you know, very defensive, sensitive, why? Because lies come, it's, it's real, it's, it's real, it's, there's a sense of reality, people don't like me, people dislike me, people judge me, sense of reality, you get what I mean? But it's lies, fundamentally, alright, you know, oh, when you are sick, today we are talking about illnesses and sickness I was talking about it with Jim you know uh, when you're sick you tend to believe everything the doctor says 
Probably your problem is this, this, this. Suspected this, 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 A, B, C illness. Suspected. And you take it as a truth. <laughs> I was... <laughs> I was deceived so many times by the doctor and the pharmacist in my church, you know. <laughs> Until the point I said, no, uh, I know. <laughs> I mean, out of, they're telling me out of goodwill. But sometimes I realize if I follow their instructions, I'm dead. <laughs> you know? so, I said, but it's delusive. But I try to think from their shoes because there's a sense of reality. That's what science says. That's what medical science says. That's what the, the principle of the nature says, you know. I don't know. Delusive. You know, I, I, I know a sister in China. Very blessed sister. She loved the, she loved the Lord. She's leading the youth in, in Tianjin, you know. And what, what happened is, her mom has, a kidney, fa has, has kidney failures, okay? At the age of probably 40 plus, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, kidney illnesses. So this sister, you know, she's born, I mean, physically weak and fragile. She has a lot of problem, a health problem, you know. So sometimes she has spin headaches. Uh, sometimes, you know, she has gastric pain. You know. So when, so but the thing with with the child is the mom from since young. Every every, every time the child has this kind of symptom, the mom will say, <coughs> most probably is genetics you will have a kidney problem also. You know? So the sister taking it to her. You know, all this while, she receives the insinuation. She takes in this into her spirit. You know? And before I came you know, this time, you know, she was having gastric pain for a month. It's really a month. And then she was... And then because of this thing, you know, she, she went for a test. You know? no, before that, she already went for a test. No, the, the report shows that kidney wasn't that good, you know, wasn't that good, I don't know. So before I came, you know, for a month she was having gastric pain. So she keeps thinking of gastric, uh, no, this kidney problem. The root cause is kidney. And what is it, they say? So she couldn't take it anymore. So she went to downstairs and you know, see a Chinese sensei. The Chinese sensei just examined her and said, what kidney problem? You have no kidney problem. It's, you're just too stressful. Then she gave her two dosage of medicine and she ate it, fine. She's healed. <laughs> Then what I'm try trying to say to you, you, you get what I'm trying to say? Now everything, illnesses are sus suspicious, are genetics, my parents have it, I have it, or whatever I tell you. It all boils down to spiritual problem. You get what I'm trying to say? Now you cannot see how loved you are. You, don't, you cannot see your health through the lens of Christ. And then from there, it could be you don't have a problem or your problem is otherwise but as you take in lies into your spirit it materializes into your physical do you know that when you take in lies it materializes into your relationship into your marriages into the things you tell your children and you see them growing up doing certain things that you hate or you don't approve of you know lies now, these are lies that were materialized when you take in into your spirit. You get what I'm trying to say? Delusive. Because it has a sense of reality, but it's not the truth fundamentally. Now, if you are spiritual enough, you know how to discern his lies. And you know how to pray against it. And once you pray against it, once, twice, thrice, slowly, consistently, then you realize the sense of lies goes away and you start to see another reality that is the Emmanuel reality and from then on healing will come to you I don't know whether you follow what I'm saying okay now you have to follow what I'm saying here because you are dealing with the enemy real enemy in your lives I've seen I mean good and helpful relationship you know turn sour because of lies that people take in I've seen people with good health you know they the health just deteriorate. Why? Because of the lies you've taken in. These are real things in our lives. You know? Now, if you don't resolve it, you know, it will come. And, and these are demonic powers and influence coming against us every moment of our lives. And mind you, the lies of Satan has occupying power. 
It occupies our mind and senses and our will. It becomes our nature. That's why, that's why I always have brethren tell me, Pastor Vincent, I find it so hard to get out of certain weaknesses. Some fear, some anxiety, some prejudice, you know, now hatred, anger. Now, I, I know, but I find it so hard to get out of it because it occupies. When you've given him the chance to come, it occupies. And all. Now, these are the work of the evil one. You need to confirm and understand. Demonic forces. Know him clearly, then you can wage war against him. And what? Can you go against him? But the question is, can you go against him? There is no way to go against him. Do you know that? Why do I say that? If you read from Psalm chapter 8 verse 5, it tells us that though we men are, are crowned with glory and honor, we were made a little lower than heavenly beings. Have you read that? Have you read that before? We were made a little lower than the angels. Now, meaning what? We men, we are more glorious and honorable as compared to angels. When God looked at us, right? Made in the image of God. But in terms of wisdom, strength, and will, we are inferior to the angels. So there is no way you and I could go against him. But I am bringing you the good news now, people. I am bringing you the ultimate truth of what God says to people in Christ. For those who are in Christ, for those who are born again in Him. Now, what does the Bible say? Because we are inferior to the fallen angels, in that sense, Christ has come to conquer Him and all. You understand? So, how do you know Satan? He is the demonic power. The power that has been conquered by Christ. Where? Answer me, where? Where is Christ now? The demonic power are powers, listen up. The demonic power are powers that has been conquered by Christ in us. You, you understand what I'm trying to say? They are powers that have been conquered by Christ in us. In us. A lot of Christians don't have a sense of how powerful, infinite, awesome the power of Christ is in who? In us. In Christians, in born again Christians like us. That's why we always take Christ for granted. Because we don't understand, we don't have a sense of how powerful Christ is. I only know someone minister to me the gospel, tell me about the gospel, I'm baptized, I know I have eternal life, that's it. But you never see Christ, you never understand the power of Christ in relation to the demonic power. You understand what I'm trying to say? If not for Christ, now I know you are suffering sometimes, trying, tempted, am I right? But let me tell you the truth, if not for Christ, you will have perished in your sins. You will have perished in your spiritual, you, you will sink into spiritual devastation. You'll be tormented mentally, emotionally, without any comfort. You will lose all hopes. You will not be preserved. But yet, in all sufferings, temptation, you are still preserved. Do you know why? Do you know why? Because of Christ. That has already conquered the demonic power in us. In us, not in others, but in us. 
I know your problem. I know your problem. You want to ask Pastor Vincent, Pastor Vincent, if you say it, Christ already conquered all, everything. But why am I still feeling so tempted, so down at times, you know? Why am I still feeling so accused? And I cannot get out of certain problems within myself or outside of myself. Why? Now, you ask me why. That is because, not because that Christ is powerless against him, but because of your lack of total reliance upon Christ. You get what I'm trying to say? What is our problem? Listen up. Why are we still feeling the deception, the power, the attacks of the evil one? Because of our lack of total reliance upon Christ. And why are you not relying totally upon Christ? Because of your lack of understanding about the enemy. Because you don't understand the enemy enough. You don't understand how powerful, how deadly he is, how fatal he could be. That's why you are not relying enough upon Christ. You are not walking closely enough with Christ. Taking Christ's grace for granted. Taking His truth loosely. Don't you realize that? You understand what I'm trying to say? And we rely a lot more on, not on His grace, but on your merit. You rely more on your human understanding and your wisdom. A lot of times. Why? Because you don't know the work of the fallen ones. And so I, a pastor, a pastor, famous, a very famous pastor said that. If you don't know Satan, you will never know Christ. You can never enjoy the power of Christ if you don't know the power of Satan well enough. Do you say amen to that? Amen. Now, you, you get what I'm trying to say now to you? Now, you just follow me. Never mind about the children. Just follow me. I give you this analogy, okay? Listen carefully. I have an auntie in my church, you know. She has stage 4 lung cancer. Stage 4. And mind you, lung cancer is deadly. You all know, right? It, it, Usually people don't get cure of lung cancer. Stage 4. It just spread over the lungs. It could very quickly spread to the organs and that's it. Within 2 months, 6 months, that's it. Gone. But amazingly, you know what? What happened is, there is a kind of chemotherapy treatment specially designed for that particular cancer she has. <laughs> really, really, I'm not joking. <laughs> I'm not making this up, okay? And in that, that auntie, <laughs> Paradoxically, it's the mother of my church doctor. <laughs> really, it is, you know. So, it, it was so amazing. Stage 4 lung cancer. But, you know, this chemotherapy treatment, the doctor say, just pop this pill. I can't remember whether it's, you pop it weekly or is it monthly. I think it was weekly. And, and what is it that the pill is expensive? And it has its side effects. When you take the pills, you know, the skin color will turn dark, you know, you know, you have patches over the skin. You know. But anyway, you have to take it. And once she took it, she has been living, you know, for two years already, you know, for after the stage four lung cancer. Two years or three years, I don't know. Ever since uh, the auntie came out, three years or two years, she's been living perfectly, no problem. Okay, side effects there. But you have to pop every week. <laughs> So, let me ask you, if you are the auntie, you have stage 4 lung cancer, and you know the pill works for you, would you be amazed, thrilled about the pills you are popping? <laughs> would you not? Would you feel so awesome about the pills you are popping? <laughs> right? And would you say, okay, I'll just, weekly, I'll just take it by monthly, never mind, it's expensive, no, no I'll just take it by monthly. Would you do that? No, the doctor says weekly. That's it. You take it weekly. Am I right? Not. But the problem now. But I tell you now, as with spiritual things, that that's what I'm saying. Now, Christ is like the pill. Satan is like that deadly cancer, coming, spreading, waiting to spread all over you, and kill you, devour you. But you have this amazing pill. <laughs> I don't know, you know. But somehow. These pills that were popping, you know, this Christ that we are eating, sometimes we get sick of Him. So costly. <laughs> it's a costly road to walk. <laughs> it's a very heavy cross to carry, you know. 
And uh, I don't know. And sometimes there are side effects. <laughs> I don't know. Now imagine now. Uh, you need this pill every week. Or you need Christ every day. But now you're feeling probably, you know, but come a day you start feeling that because it's costly, or then you start to develop some doubts in you. And probably, you know, I'm, I don't really need that pill so much, you know, that kind of thing. I could just take it monthly instead of weekly, you know, that kind of thing. You, you get what I'm trying to say? That is what I meant by the lack of reliance upon Christ. I'm using a physical analogy to talk about spiritual things. You get what I mean? We start to take Christ for granted. That awesome salvation that saves us from hell, from all demonic, the Holy Spirit that protects us from all demonic attack comes through Christ. So when you start to get a bit sick about Christianity, about meetings, about you know, hearing the word of God, you know, you start feeling, you know, I don't I don't really need the truth so much, you know, I want something more relevant, you know. That is the time deception will creep in on you, on your minds, on your marriages. On your finances, on your health, everything, on your relationship, it comes in subtly and it takes root, becomes your nature, becomes your perspectives. You realize that? Because of what? It's not because Christ is not powerful enough, it's because of your lack of total reliance upon Him. Amen to that? Now I'm saying that you have to understand Christ, the work of God, the power of Christ is complete. All right? complete so so when you feel listen up so when you sense the demonic influences coming upon your mind when you are turning lukewarm you're giving in to flesh having perceptions and thinking not in sync with the truth that is the time to hold on to Christ. Pop your pills again. Okay? Pop your pills. Pray by the truth again. And how do you do it? The Bible says, pray in the Spirit. Okay? Pray in the Spirit. On all occasion. On all circumstances with all kinds of prayer all kinds of prayer all kinds whether it's fixed time prayer whether it's focused prayer all kinds of prayer when you kneel on and pray earnestly you know all kinds and all kinds of of requests Lord help me test the will of God and know His will and request from God be bold to request. Pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayer. So if you want to do this, Ephesians chapter 6, 18. If you want to do this, listen people, remnants. If you want to do this, you have to go back to your identity. I said I'm going back to the fun. I'm going back to the fundamentals again. Okay, listen up. Go back to your identity. Restore. The spirit of sonship. Don't believe what you feel. Don't give it the accusation and guilt. Go, go back to your identity. No, don't just know it in your head. From your identity, who am I? See yourself again through the lens of Christ and know you are the children of God. And the children of God listens to the Father. Go back to the spirit of sonship. Pray in the spirit means go back to the spirit of sonship. Not the spirit of slavery. You know, a lot of times, we know in our head we are children of God. But we always exercise the spirit of slavery. You, you get what I mean? We have that kind of fear. We have that kind of conditional thinking. I say, oh God, I, think, I don't think you will bless me because I didn't read the Bible. I didn't pray. You know, I always sing in the self-pity. I'm so weak. You know. Now, you see, you know in your head you are a child of God. But... When you pray, you exercise not the spirit of sonship, but the spirit of slavery, the spirit of fear, spirit of conditional thinking, self-merit, you know? 
That's wrong. That, that's where you, you didn't hit Satan on his head. You, you prayed wrongly. So I'm not talking about what hate knowledge thing. Now you know you're a child of God. No, you have to exercise it in your spirit, the spirit of sonship. And how do you exercise it when he accuses you, when the devil accuses you? How you go against him when, when you've done something wrong? You know, when you know you've done something, Lord, I, I know I've done something, I cannot hope for anything good in you. Who says that? Where is the spirit of sonship? Go to the Lord, even if you cannot face man, go to him. Find acceptance from the spirit of sonship. No fear, bow before God. Exercise it. Okay? Until you get this right, the gospel doesn't take root and you will, you will not know how to go against the demonic influences. Pray in the spirit. Go back to identity. Restore the spirit of sonship. And then go back to the promise. The promise of God. That God will be with you. Go back to the promise of God. He is with you. And through you, God will bless all nations. So restore in you a kingdom purpose okay it's not hate knowledge again it's not just for gospelization as you pray through for gospelization the heavenly purpose once again sprung in your heart and you start to look at all things on this earth as meaningless fading away what's more important than living for the kingdom you see it's spiritual it's spiritual it goes back to them hmm. if you're worried about your children you look at them you know I was in America no? I was so thankful I saw the kids when they grew up in America and and you know famous pastor have said you know America has missed the gap the godly people are in their 40s 50s but they didn't pass down the promise of God to the 30s and 20s and you look at those people youngsters now the way they think the way they live their lives you know it's going to church but like pseudo Christian lukewarm you don't care to think about God what kingdom you know I fulfilled my duties you know it's a superficial Christianity it's hard to relate to them because these people they only want things that are relevant and when they sit down and listen to messages they don't know spiritual message what spiritual message they only want message that work for them for their needs you get what I mean that, that's why the, the pastors godly pastors in America is having a hard time and that's why we are going there for, for the youth conferences in Remnant Conference and for me to bring this message there is not enough I need to bring some models <laughs> I need to bring people like us that we really live our life centered upon the gospel because to them it's not possible we have a life to live you know we, we, it's alright I mean we, we are doing fine you know going to church already you know no that's not that these are the culture in America miss the gap so I'm bringing you there to show you to show them bringing you there to show them what is Acts chapter 2 alright and then three pray in the spirit on all occasions and for that you have to seek the will of God seek the will of the Father that's how our Lord Jesus seeks the will of the Father let your will be done not mine okay and I'm coming to the end okay you know my message always three points right I'm coming to the end now I'm talking about prayer here pray pray till what <laughs> pray till what what is the ultimate purpose of prayer pray till submission happens in your lives now listen all this restoring of sonship uh, kingdom purpose you know test the will of God please don't don't just be conceptual don't don't just use this to give yourself a good view the result of all this praying in the spirit is to lead to submission so are you in submission people are you living a life of submission if you are in submission 
you will have the peace of God in your lives. You can be doing everything right, everything right as a Christian, but somehow you're not happy about life. You're not happy about going to church. You're not happy about Christianity. Why? You're still lacking in submission. And that's why the demonic influences are still right there in your heart and mind. You realize that? Do you know Satan only goes away fully when you submit to God? Now, can you turn with me to James? You turn to James. I'm going to end this, okay? Turn with me to the book of James. James chapter 4. Now listen, chapter 4, verse 4, it talks about, You adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world is hatred toward God? Alright, talking about God and the world, alright? And we all know the pull of the world, the lure of the world is so strong. Am I right? But you see, James is giving us the answer in chapter 6, not chapter 6, verse 6, but he gives us more grace, right? As we are struggling in this way, he gives us more grace to who? People to who? He gives to the humble. That's why the scripture says, God opposes the proud. The proud meaning people who want to have a say in their own lives. Who want to have their own sovereignty. But there are people who know they cannot depend on themselves. They need total reliance on Christ. Total reliance, not partial reliance. These are the humble people. And these are the people that, that God gives more grace to them. He gives grace to the humble. Verse 7, listen up. Submit yourself then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Now, can you see these two links? Submit to God and resisting the devil is, is equal, equivalent. Okay, equivalent. But you say, God is so hard to submit to you. Why? And then James said, now, so come near to God and he will come near to you. People who come near to God are people who need God, who see the need for total reliance on Him. Alright? Unless you have a reason to come, you won't come near. Unless you see how powerful and deadly the, the devil is, you wouldn't come near. You see, you wouldn't be praying earnestly in the morning. You wouldn't be praying earnestly when you're feeling, feeling the attacks, feeling the lukewarmness and disbelief. So, follow me, come. How to come near? But you notice every time when I want to come near to God, there is something obstructing me. What is that? Wash your hands, you sinners, that are sin in our lives. And purify your hearts. You double-minded. You see, there are two things here, the sin and double-mindedness. Sin and double-mindedness. In verse 9, grieve, mourn, and wail. Change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourself before the Lord and He will lift you up. Now, I want to bring you to this attention. I want to bring you to attention to this spiritual principle. And that is, listen up, okay? Submitting to God. Okay, submission to God is equal to resisting the devil. People always tell me, I want to resist the devil. I resist him. <laughs> uh, Go away, Satan, I resist you. Where is your submission? Answer me. If you don't submit, you're not resisting. He works in the hearts and minds of men, the will of men. You see? Listen. All right, so submitting. I just give you something to think about, okay? Now, don't be deceived into thinking I have prayed, I've done my quiet time, I've come for meetings. Now, some people can be ritually doing these things to make themselves feel good. Some people will say it's not. I want to study theology, you know, I want to go to seminary. Now, there's nothing wrong with going into seminary and studying theology. 
huh? But the whole idea is God wants submission. If you are going in to take in knowledge, but not knowing what to submit, you will never find peace from knowledge. You will never find peace from doing something ritually, blindly. You got what I mean? You will not find real peace from just knowing 36 lessons, but if you are not praying in the spirit to the point of submission, all right? What I'm trying to say, put it in you. What is submission? Submission is really about hearing from God, knowing what God reveals to you, and you find peace in doing the things that God wants you to do now. I say it again. Hearing from Him, like the Lord Jesus, He's led by the Spirit to the desert. And the tempter is there. Never mind the tempter is there. But if you are lead there, and you keep hearing, the Spirit is still there. Hear from the Lord. Hear from the Spirit. And from there, do the things that God wants you to find peace in doing the things that God wants you to do. And then, from there, you find the devil flee from you. A lot of your spiritual root problem goes away from there. Now, everyone has lessons for submission. Everyone is wired towards different weaknesses, different sins, different problems. And all. Now, you must pray. Pray. And as you pray, as the Lord reveals to you, now, there's something wrong about your relationship with people or with brethren. Now, you must pray till you find a way of submission in relationship with people. Without that, you can be doing a lot of things, but you never hit the target. You never get the peace. Because that is the part that God wants to deal with you. You get what I'm trying to say? Okay? If you are having, no, struggling with, say, finances, or no, you must find a way of submission. First, I'm going to be contented with what the Lord gives me. Pray till you find contentment. And don't stop there, people. Manage it. Manage the money in accordance to what the Lord said. as how He instructed you. Until you do so, don't let yourself fall into fake peace. You know? Do it. Now, some of you, I know you are youngsters, you know, uh, some of you struggling with your future, uncertain about future. I mean, some of you came to me and said, Pastor Vincent, I'm really really don't know what I'm going to do in my future and all. No, I'm happy that if you come to me, if you want to seek the will of God, I'm happy to test and approve the will of God with you. But you cannot go on feeling uncertain. Two months, three months, one year, two years. Now, if you are, if you come to Pastor Vincent and Pastor Vincent test the will of God with you and say, this is what God, the way God is training you, is moving you forward. Okay, you lift in it wholehearted. Go into it. As you live in it, let the Holy Spirit show you more and more into your future, what God is going to use you. Okay? Go into it. If you're not, if you're just hearing from Pastor Vincent, but you're not moving in, you realize you want to be happy. And you always come back to the same question, the same doubt, same problem. Why? I don't know. I'm still uncertain. Then that is the problem of submission. You get what I'm trying to say? <laughs> You get what I'm driving at, okay? You must pray. Now, don't let your mind be delusive towards yourself. When God revealed His, inspired His Word, 66 books in the Bible, God is not just writing words down. He's giving us the Spirit. As you read the Word, test His will, know His Spirit, hear from Him, listen to Him, find a piece of living in it, and then come a day, you see the Lord exhort you and use you greatly for His kingdom. And that's what I've experienced, okay? Now, listen, I know it's hard. Why is it hard? Because the book of James has told us there are certain challenges. What does it say here? Come near to God. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Now, the challenge lies in there are some physical I don't know how to spell P 
PHY there are some physical sins sins in our lives okay what sins? wash your hands hands meaning your actions your works you are really living in some sins really giving into flesh in terms of the way you lived hands is a representation of the way you lived now sins and what is it next thing and double mindedness now these two things goes together double mindedness now it is especially hard for those if you have been living in disobedience for some time you have been used to your own ways or the worldly ways or some by some time of some time so each time when you're faced with the issue of submission there is the problem of double-mindedness uh, I want God but I also want the world I want to be led by the spirit but the flesh is there right you have this problem right like, like what I say some of us we are wired towards certain weaknesses so I want God you know but there you no know, certain it's hard there's the strength of the devil he works through my flesh still there you know so I'm gonna give you the last answer okay the book of James said listen up if it, read with me again what the Bible says after the Bible says that it says verse 9 grief mourn and wail change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom now listen grief mourn and will change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom mourn and gloom why? now in the past I don't understand why the Bible says that because the Bible didn't Paul tell us to be joyful always to worship God with glad and sincere hearts and you know? give thanks always I thought Christians should be you know always joyful always giving thanks you know always happy yes but not listen but not when you are engaging in a battle a real battle with the devil you understand what I'm saying when the devil has some strong holds on you when you have realized yes there's this part in me that we refuse to submit to God why because the strength of the devil is so strong there okay now you cannot be just happy and let loose never mind about it you have to grieve you have to wail you have to gloom change your laughter and your joy to gloom Lord help me release me from this get down on your knees don't take this lightly you get what I mean? now when you struggle in your disbelief when you struggle with your spiritual problem you struggle like that God will set you free God will say the power of the Holy Spirit will come upon you but if you just let it loose let it be you know it doesn't come it remains there the strength of the evil one just remain the strength of your flesh remains there I know it okay why is Pastor Vincent so spiritually discerning because as with spiritual as with demonic influences I don't let loose I know when it comes I get down on my knees and pray I know when to quiet myself I know how not to be led on that is the thing and when I know some things just capture my heart you know, some problems some sins that come capture me no I cannot let loose I have to pray against it you get what I mean? alright I cannot let my emotions and senses be led on to it grief mourn and wail when you are in a real battle with the evil one and from here you will find the strength of the Holy Spirit to overcome your sin and you will be one minded okay and then you will be able to go into submission and be liberated all right and this is my message for the first message okay I want you to know the conquering demonic power in our lives who has conquered it Christ has conquered it so what is so if Christ has conquered what have you to do total reliance on him but total reliance is not just lip service Total reliance involving prayer. Pray in the Spirit. Till submission happens in your lives. 
But if you have a problem with submission, don't just stay there. And, Look, I know, but I can't do it. You know, grief, mourn and will. All right. Pray with ferventness, earnestness, watchfulness. And even you, you feel sad and contrite, broken because of your sin, because of your double-mindedness. As you do that, the strength, the power of the Holy Spirit will release you from it. Amen? Amen? Okay, come let's pray. Father, thank you so much for the word you've given us. Father, I pray that uh, what you've spoken through your servant could be internalized by every one of us here. It's a spiritual message, Lord, but I pray that the Holy Spirit will work in our hearts and mind. Give us the spiritual discernment, understanding to know you in full and and even to know and confirm your words to be so real in our hearts that we could start praying in our in us and we could start getting out of those lukewarmness and richer christian living a superficial christian living in our lives and really nail the devil in our head lord let us find a way of submission as what you have told us and let us not be discouraged if we are if we, are st- if we are still having problems or weaknesses in our lives because that is, that is the part that you want us to pray with, with ferventness, with brokenness, contriteness and there the amazing power of the Holy Spirit will come upon us greatly and give us more evidence and answers in our lives so I pray for these remnants Lord it's hopeful and potential people that you have raised up for yourself, Lord. You are the one who started good work in them. Lord, you carry on this good work in their lives. Thank you so much. And, and I commit them to your hands, Lord. And I pray that the messages in these few days, you know, really impact our lives and bring us to another turning point in our lives. Thank you so much. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen.